Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. This is part two of my NBA 2K19 wish list. Now I know a lot of people are probably going to be in the comments like, bro, give it up. It's over for 2K. It's dead. Nobody wants to play the game. I mean, we always say that around this time of the year because we've been playing it since August or September. And I think that, you know, we need to give some new creative juices to 2K. So if you guys would probably, you know, share this on Twitter at Ronnie2K, at uh, the 2K dev team members, you know, stuff like that. But let's just go ahead and dive right into it. So first thing I want to say off the bat is congratulations to everybody who got into the NBA 2K E-League draft. The draft is actually today, which is pretty dope. And, you know, uh, I hope that everybody prospers in that. But I want to talk to you guys about my part. I feel like my part got the short end of the stick this year as far as career goes. And you guys already see it. A lot of people play Pro-Am because of the aspect of getting to the NBA, literally. Not only did they rename Park Playground, which a video game already exists called NBA Playgrounds, they literally didn't do anything with it. I mean, I know they had the Ruffles Challenge and the Mountain Dew things and stuff like that, but I mean, you really didn't feel it. You know, it's, it's no more affiliations. Um, as well as you can't travel to different parks per se. I mean, I know you can just hop into another server, go down to the train station and voila, you're in a new park. But it was really never no new feeling. I mean, for me, I felt like last year, even though I played my majority of games at sunset because the majority of time that I played was during those rival days where we had to get those amount of wins to try to beat out Rivet and uh, Old Town. I felt like this year, it was no real reason to go to the park. Um, not only did 2K have a problem with the frame rate issue, after they fixed that, park really didn't have anything else. So, I want to say one thing before we like deep dive into this. Um, not only make sure you guys leave your comments about my park, playground, whatever you want to call it, below in the comment section, but I want to say, give park to the community. Now, I know you probably, 2K, you're probably like, what do you mean give it to the community? Well, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a couple options on what you can do. But what I mean in a sense is people play your game because we feel as though we can connect with our friends. We can connect to some of our favorite basketball teams. We can connect to some of our favorite basketball players in a sense as far as play style goes, jump shots, creation, stuff like that. But when I say give it back to the community... I want you to literally give people a reason to log into Park and play Park continuously all day besides having their name up on the board, like one in a million, by the way, on a board, top player in the park, blah, blah, blah. Give us private parks, private sessions within that mood. Now, I know a lot of people are probably going to say, well, I mean, we technically really don't need private. Yes, we do. This is this is one of the reasons why I always say when we used to go to team up and stuff like that, and a lot of people every year used to say, man, they're not listening to y'all. What's going on? And then next year's game, they'll be like, oh, they use some of your ideas from when you guys went to team up for the next year's game. That's how it is every year. I don't expect this wish list to affect 2K19 at all, but I know that some of these ideas will potentially spark something in the dev's brain and say, you know what, maybe we can implement that in this game or we can wait till next year to bring it. So I'm not sure if you guys remember back in NBA 2K15 days. Yeah, I, I took it back a couple years. NBA 2K15, we used to host like different private sessions and, you know, Jordan Rec Center tournaments and stuff like that. But we always used to have to go to different servers in order to get different games. Now, let's take a page out of like, uh, let's say... Battlefield or Call of Duty or any video game that has private servers and creations for different companies. Like I was playing Battlefield the other day and um, I'm a content creator for Machinima. They were telling me like, hey, yo, we have Machinima servers on Battlefield. So if you want to like get in a game of 64 with all Machinima content creators, you can do that. And I'm thinking like, that's that's fly. 
That's real, real fly. So why not say to yourself, okay, you can have the whole open world experience. That's beautiful. That's lovely. But for people that want to throw tournaments or have like a real 1v1 against squad against squad or let's have a tournament where as though people from all around the world not having to just be on East Coast servers, West Coast servers, Asian servers, just, just have everybody say, you know what, I'm going to put 10 people in a party, maybe something like that. We're going to write everything out. We're going to put everybody on a list. Bam, bam, bam. This is your squad right here. This is your squad right here. And we can have the whole part to ourselves. Games going on simultaneously. Not having to wait for one team to get done. Then, yo, everybody get off the spot. All right, y'all get on the spot. All right, now y'all play. I want to be able to take up the whole part. I want to be able to use... Uh, the Old Town portion, the Rivet portion, the Sunset portion, and even the 2v2s if we feel like we want to get a little 2v2 tournament going on within that simultaneous session. Now also, big thing, we have to have some type of control over the camera and the replays in part. Now I know that, you know, you guys are probably like, bro, we really don't need that. You know, we want to, you know, keep the ball moving and stuff like that for online games. But sometimes I would love to end the game and be able to see some replays from that game. I'm not saying have the replays play throughout the game. I'm talking about at the end of the game, when the game is over in these private sessions, you can go to the playback where it says, uh, if this person was on a seven game winning streak for the tournament, in their sixth game, they had so many amount of dunks, so many amount of layups, so many amount of blocks, all these highlights listed, and you could play them back. We need to be able to store that information somewhere so people can make more fire videos, so people can make more fire content. I know that you guys can do this because you guys have had Real Maker. You guys used to have that, and you took it out the game, and then you guys tried to implement this new type of replay system. Now, I know that Shady is still doing his thing as far as editing, but it's hard to like edit like different gameplay when you're playing online so i would love it if you guys would store some games for us to play back instead of us having to always go to like if we if we don't have a like an elgato you got to go into playstation um, get the last 15 minutes or whatever and stuff like that but most of the time people are on win streaks so you really can't do that so i would love it if you would store like our last Let's say last 20 games. You guys can max it out at our last 20 games, store all that information for replay purposes, and it'd be lit. Let's dive a little bit more into the whole private session thing, right? So not only can we do things for tournaments, but let's talk about just squad versus squad, trash talking versus trash talking, the bumping of heads of people. Why can't we do that? Like, what is so hard about saying, yo, I want to play your, your guys, your best team, your best, you know what I'm saying, whoever. And I want you to come to my private session, whereas though you guys already implemented my court, right? So why can't you say my part? Hmm. If you guys are going to rename it the playground, right, for like the little online thing, why can't you rename something my park and give us an entire park at our disposal, right? So think about it like this. If it's my park, right, why can't we have our custom courts that we will have in my court at the my park? Why can't we have hardwood out there or something like that or some dope chains and stuff like that for nets and everything like that? Or our own custom park, if people want to come play at our court, this is what they got in the title. Maybe we have like our own set house rules and stuff like that. Give us control. That would be so dope. Just imagine there being another line saying this this counts as four points at our court because it's our house rules on any given day because we set that up that way. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just giving you guys ideas on what would make the community much more happier to play your game and get a more immersive experience online instead of just saying i'm gonna play a little bit of my career i'm gonna play a little bit of part but i'm gonna run the heck out of this pro in because i gotta get ready for this 2k e-league and everything of like that like i'm just saying bro it's so much better to say yo you know what why not give it to the community why not give them what they want because i know that they're gonna play our game more and if you guys are thinking about microtransactions and everything like that 2k let me just say you can make a lot more money if you do this 
I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. I know a lot of people are probably going to punch me in my gut in the comment section talking about, bro, why are you talking about microtransactions? But you kind of have to give 2K a reason to push the foot forward. I mean, they're not really going to do too much if they really don't say, you know what? This experience might be better for the consumer and it'll help our... You know what I'm saying? Our middle line. Like, yeah, it just has to, man. This is this is the way video games go. Like, people don't knock the game out of the park without knowing they can make a profit from it. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to think, when you're developing a video game, bro, there's certain things that you have to, like, put in the game. And there's the wants and the needs uh, opposed to, like, the ha must-haves. So, like, the 2K dev team, when they listen to this video, they'll probably be like, Yo, that sounds so dope. But then they'll go to the drawing board and they'll go into their meetings and everything like that. And and the first thing they'll say is, well, do you have the budget for it? Do you have the time to develop that? And then it's like, oh, man. You know what? We're going to have to put that on the jar, drawing board or the shelf for next year. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot that goes into developing games, guys. I'm not saying that. You know, 2K is not going to do it, but I'm just I'm just giving you guys like a, a wide view of what it takes to develop a game. I've been on different teams for different companies to develop video games. And there's always the problem where, you know, we want this, but we have to make sure that this is in the game. So maybe this might not make it, but we're going to try our hardest. But like I said, this is a, a, a need, a want, not a must have. You feel me? So. You know, but moving on, man, let's let's move into something different, right? So from the whole my park experience to saying you can have your own custom clothing and everything like that. Why can't we have our own custom clothing stuff that we can actually design as far as shorts, sneakers, socks, headbands, every, the whole nine, bro. I want to be able to customize every single piece, article of accessory, clothing, anything like that that's available in my park to use for my park. If you guys got a Jordan T, right, and the Jordan just say error, right, why can't we put our names on the back of that T-shirt if we want to be like the Jordan crew or something like that? Why can't we have a Jordan jersey with the Jordan logo with something on the back, you know what I'm saying, that got our name on it and our numbers and stuff like that? Why can't we customize that stuff? That stuff should be customizable without a problem, man. You guys have to say to yourselves, what will get people to buy more stuff? with the microtransactions in the game, of course it would be to customize everything they own. Who wouldn't want, like, let's say for instance, I got my Baldy logo or whatever, right? I put my Baldy, Baldy logo on a pair of JBLs on the headband or whatever, or even on the ear cup. Maybe I'll have like the Baldy logo on the toe of my new custom Nikes that I made. Like, I'm just, I'm just giving you guys ideas, man. You have to allow us to customize just about everything in your game as far as my part goes because this is what we want and this will make us play the game so much longer than you expect. Now, next thing. Let's talk about the gameplay. We have to talk about the gameplay at my part. Now, I know a lot of people are still going through frame rate issues. They tried to fix as much as they could, but it is still going on, 2K. Now, I know that a lot of people want to show off their, their overalls on the court. They want to show off their, their uh, PSN names and stuff like that. But 2K, there are certain things you have to take out of the game to allow us to have a fluid game at my park. If the mop park is flooded with players, this has been going on since you guys introduced it. There's always skip. There's always lag. There's always delay when more and more and more and more players come to our mop park. If I go into the mop park setting and I come in and it's just me, I'm showing online, I'm streaming or whatever the case may be. And 20 more players come into my mop park if the availability is there for them to join. I instantly start lagging. I instantly start seeing frame rate drops. We have to address the elephant in the room. I'm not saying fix your servers. But what I'm saying is find out what the problem is and address it so that it works forever. I'm talking about forever so that you guys don't have to keep going back and back 
and back and seeing what is working and what's not and what's oh where did it oh did we see a surge here did we what, what's going on we need this to be able to be fixed so people can have a fluid experience man i love going to the my park and just you know wilding out with the homies but when you start seeing frame rate drops and stuff like that it hurts it hurts it hurts the whole experience all it takes is somebody to be like man 2k as soon as one person say that bro the whole team, the whole party, the whole experience, the whole stream is done. Nobody else want to watch it. Nobody want to play it. Nobody want to deal with it. And we got to address that, man. If you guys address that for the fans, I promise you, bro, so many people are going to be playing my park again. Next thing, bump steals. They, they have to go 2K. I mean, I know that you guys want the ball to be very tangible at all times. But bump steals, man, nobody does that in the NBA. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, 2K. If, if you've seen somebody possibly get the ball hit off another player and, you know, they take it the other way on a, on a, a loose ball situation, that's fine. But I'm telling you right now, if I'm doing a dribble combo, right, and a player runs up to me, and while I'm doing my dribble combo, which this is an animation you put in a game. So every time it's time for me to do a crossover or behind the back or step back, this is an animation that you guys put in the game. And you know how much time it takes for the animation to happen. And some people might exploit that. So if I'm doing a regular simple crossover, right? I do a simple crossover and I'm about to spin off this person. This person is already driving one way and I spin. But the help defense is coming to me. He don't swipe at the ball. He don't do nothing. And I go into a spin move animation. The animation should make me split those two defenders. Because if I got one defender going this way. And the dude is coming up to me this way. Isn't there a lane to split them? If that's the spin animation I'm going for. So if you guys see a spin animation. Why am I boom. And then I like. I kind of like. Oh what the heck was that? I just got. I just got molly wop. But the camera flips and they go on the other way. There's no way I can stop that. How, how how is that in the game? If I'm inside the paint, right, and I'm backing the player down, right, backing him down, all post work, big man style, backing the man down, and then, like, I go like this with the ball to get, like, into maybe an up and under animation, or I'm about to turn and yam on him for the poster of the year. Why when I do that, right, I grab the ball, and I'm about to, like, face up. Remember, I got two steps as soon as I do, so this is about to be a two-step thing. But a point guard comes into the paint, and then when I go like that, I lose the ball like this. My hands go up in the air, and I look down at the ball like, oh, my God, what happened? Because it's a bump steal animation. Also, it's the same exact animation that a player does up at the top when he gets double teamed. He puts both hands in the air, and this is for, like, passing out a double team anything. A player can be passing out a double team, all that. The same animation always happens. The ball rolls down your leg. Your hands go up in the air like, oh, my God. And it's nothing that you can do. So there has to be somebody there on the dev team that says, man, this has to stop. This is killing the game. Because on average, turnovers are supposed to happen from steals on the passing lane and one-on-one -on -one steals from maybe a lockdown defender or whatever the case may be. But these bump steals... Make the turnover skyrocket. I've seen games with 21 turnovers for no reason. 21 turnovers in five-minute quarters in regular games. So just imagine how it is at the park with the spacing. Oh, my God. It's terrible. It's terrible. Listen, please, 2K, I'm begging you. Take the bump still out of the game. That's the biggest problem for 2K right now. I don't care what nobody say. A lot of people can say anything they want about the game what their biggest problem may be. But to me, bump steals are the biggest problem in the game because when they happen, they make everybody pissed off. Nobody wants to play. And I'm telling you now, I can't deal with it. As soon as I get a bump steal, I'm ready to turn the whole game off. I'm, I'm dead. Man, listen, let me come down, do a crossover, and I'm driving past a player, and another player slide over, and I get a bump steal. Oh, I'm livid. I am living. I'm done. I'm done for the whole day. I'm done. I'm, I'm so serious right now. So a lot of people that are point guards and stuff like that, they love the crossover animations and things of that nature. But we need a couple more. 
also we don't need wonky animations that happen like say for instance a player falls right there's been times where a player fall on his back then he get right back up on defense he right in your mitt like this you be like yo like how did that even happen i just dropped dude so we need wonky animations to be stopped when crossing people over our jump shots are working for my career and are working for my court they have to work for park I mean, I know that, you know, I talked about the lag and the, and, the, and the issues and stuff like that, the latency. It don't matter how much lag, how much latency issues you have. If I press the square button for a certain amount of time that I know my jump shot going to be green, you shouldn't be giving me this much of a bar. I'm just saying. Because technically, if we're dealing with lag and latency issues online, it's all about how much a person presses the, the analog, right? Because... If I press the button or I'm using the analog, it should be the same time every time, right? Or are you going through, you know what I'm saying, when you see the jump shot go up, when you're letting it go? Because I don't I don't know what the problem is because it's so much lag going on with jump shots. If I'm shooting a mid-range jump shot and I see my player doing the same moveset and I let the, the button go at that time, I'm like, all right, that should be green. It's much bar. And then I'd be like, you know what? Let me do it from feeling it, right? So then I do it from feeling it. They give me this much bar. Not a green, but they give me this much bar. And I'm so so I'm trying to figure out where's the where's the little spot where the greens are supposed to happen. Because I'm a shot maker. So when I'm doing them leaning shots, most of those are green most of the time. But sometimes when it's lag issues, I get a full bar, I get this much bar, depending on how I'm trying to play. So I mean that's that's one thing that you guys need to address. Those jump shots, man, it's crazy. Greens, I, I think they took a step backwards this year. I mean, I, I feel like they're still effective, but they're only effective in high ball screens. I feel like when a person sets the screen and they pop out and, you know, you might drive and kick it back, that works. That's like 80 to 100% of the time. But when a player is picking and rolling, huh, it's so many things that you might have to deal with. You might have to deal with when that player comes to set that pick and you go around that pick, the other player might come, bump still. Or... The play will develop. The player will roll. He will pass him the ball. Glue hands. Ball go right out of bounds. Or you might have that pass it to him. They get the ball. Oh, they're about to go up. Bump still in the paint. So it's like, <laughs> it's, a, it's I mean, you, you can hear what the problems are for me explaining to you the certain situations that happen when playing the game. That bump still has to go. It just got to go. All right, guys. It's almost time for me to get up out of here. I didn't kept you guys so long. But I'm going to address two things before I go. As far as developing your player online versus offline, where some people think that one player should be for online only, one player should be for offline only, I don't feel that way. I feel like if you go into my career, anything you can touch or tap to make your player better should be usable. There would not be a lot of 99 overalls. There would not be a lot of 98s, 97s, 96, 95s, 94s, 93s, 92s, 91s, or even 90 overalls if it wasn't for being able to play offline and online to grind for your badges here, play your games to get your uh, your attribute bars up here. So I feel like I've, there's no problem with me there. I feel like we should be able to play my career, pro-am, and park to get our player up to get to that overall now next thing i said this in my last video park badges have to come back now i call them guy badges i know a lot of people probably was like bro what are you talking about guy badges but we need to have some type of badges that make us flourish a little bit better than other players from our experience at the park because that will give people the incentive, again, to play park. If they know that there's a badge you could potentially get from playing park only, that's dope. That makes people want to play the mode. So with that being said, guys, i leave it to y'all. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you want inside the game. Maybe I'll talk about one of your comments in my next video, but I know within this series, I will round up probably the top 25 questions from the community, and then I'll make a video about that as well. But this is the end of part two, man. Part three, we're definitely going to dive into Pro-Am, and we're going to be talking more about that 2KE League and everything like that. But this is your boy IKC signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. 
All right, guys, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys definitely enjoy this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and you can also watch one of my previous videos after hitting that subscribe button. I hope you guys like this video. Let's get this thing to 5,000 likes. And this is your boy IKC signing out. Peace.